Sweetheart Roland. Once upon a time, there was a woman who was a real witch, and she had two daughters. One was ugly and wicked, but she loved her because she was her own daughter. The other was good and lovely, but she hated her for she was her only foster child. Ooh. She was only her foster child. Ooh. Now this foster child had a, be had a beautiful apron, which the other daughter, daughter envied. And she said to her mother that she must and would have it. Just wait quietly, my child, said her mother. You shall have it. Tonight, when she is asleep, I will go and chop off your sister's head. Only take care to lie on the farther side of the bed against the wall and push her well to this side. Now, oh, okay, getting right into it. Thanks, thanks, Brothers Grimm. Now, all this would certainly have come to pass if the poor girl had not been standing in a corner and heard what they said. She was not even allowed to go near the door all day, and when bedtime came, the witch's daughter got into, f got into bed first so as to lie at the farther side. But when she was asleep, the other gently changed places with her and put herself next to the wall. In the middle of the night, the witch crept up, holding an axe in her right hand, while with her left, she felt to find if anyone was there. And I actually want to point out the old spelling of axe. That's rather fascinating. This book was published in uh, 64, 63. And I don't know if that is, I don't know if that's an error. I kind of doubt it or if that's an artifact from 1963 English, which I kind of doubt, or if that's for some reason rather literally copied from the translation, because I think this is the Brothers Grimm. Were they German? I cannot remember any of that. At any rate, that is rather weird. I could look that up, but I'm not gonna. Can I? Oh, is that planning? Awesome planning. Okay. Let's just correct this. Can I do it this way? I want to make sure that you can see the left hand page. There we go, that's a lot better. Kind of zoomed out. Then she seized the axe with both hands, struck and struck off her own child's head. When she had gone away, the maiden got up and went to the house of her sweetheart, Roland, and knocked at his door. When he came out, she said to him, Listen, dear Roland, we must quickly fly. Our fost my foster mother tried to kill me, but she hit her own child instead. When day comes, and she sees what she has done, we shall be lost. But, said Roland, you must first get her magic wand, or we shall not be able to escape if she comes after us. Remember that she's a real witch. Not mean, and she's a mean old witch. She's an actual magic-using witch with a wand. The maiden fetched the magic wand, and then she took her foster sister's head and dropped three drops of blood from it, one by the bed, one in the kitchen, and one on the stairs. After that, she hurried away with her sweetheart, Roland. When the old witch got up in the morning, she called her daughter in order to give her the apron, but she did not come. Then she called, Where are you? Where did she leave the... Oh, okay, okay. So the apron was like somewhere else in the room. It's not. It wasn't being worn at the time. Okay. Here on the stairs, answered one drop of blood. <sighs> So she was using the magic wand. Okay. The witch went to the stairs but saw nothing. So she called again. Where are you? Let me just double check that everything's going well here. It is. Here in the kitchen warming myself, answered the second drop of blood. The witch went into the kitchen but found nothing. Then she called again. Where are you? Here in bed, sleeping, answered the third drop of blood. 
So she went into the bedroom. So she went into the bedroom, and there she found her own child, whose head she had chopped off herself. The witch flew into a violent passion and sprang out of the window. As she could see for many miles around, she soon discovered the maiden hurrying away with Roland. That won't do you any good, she cried. However far you may go, you won't escape me. She put on her seven league boots, and before long she overtook them. I wondered where the seven league boots idea came from, because I've heard of that before. I think in more than one place. When the maiden saw her coming, with the magic wand, she changed her sweetheart into a lake and changed herself into a duck swimming in it. The, the witch stood on the shore and threw breadcrumbs into the water and did everything she could think of to entice the duck ashore, but it was all to no purpose, and she was obliged to go back at night without having accomplished her object. Oh, okay, okay. When she had gone away, the maiden and Roland resummoned their own, resumed their own shapes, and they walked the whole night till break of day. Then the maiden changed herself into a beautiful rose in the middle of a briar hedge, and Roland into a fiddler. Before long, the witch came striding along and said to the fiddler, "Good fiddler, may I pick this beautiful rose?" By all means, he said, and I will play to you. As she crept into the hedge in great haste to pick the flower, for she knew well who the flower was, Roland began to play. And she had to dance, whether she liked or not, for it was a magic dance. The faster he played, the higher she had to jump, and the thorns to tore her clothes to ribbons and scratched her till she bled. He would not stop a moment, so she had to dance till she fell down dead. When the maiden was freed from the spell, Roland said, Now I will go to my father and order the wedding. Then I will stay here in the meantime, said the, maiden, said the maiden, and so that no one shall recognize me while I am waiting, I will change myself into a common red stone. So Roland went away and the maiden stayed in the field as a stone, waiting his return. But when Roland reached home, he fell into the snares of another woman, who made him forget all about his love. The poor maiden waited a long, long time, but when he did not come back, she became very sad and changed herself into a flower. Somebody at least will tread upon me, she thought. Oh. Now it so happened that a shepherd was watching his sheep in the field, and he saw the flower and picked it because he thought it was so pretty. He took it home and put it carefully away in a chest. From that time forward, a wonderful change took place in the shepherd's hut. When he got up in the morning, all the work was done. The tables and benches were dusted, the fire was lighted, and the water was carried in. At dinner time, when he came home, the table was laid and a well-cooked meal stood ready. He could not imagine how it all came about for he never saw a creature in his house, and nobody could be hidden in that tiny hut. He was much pleased at being so well served, but at last he got rather frightened and went to a wise woman to ask her advice. The wise woman said, There is magic behind it. You must look carefully about the room early in the morning, and whatever you see, throw a white cloth over it, and the spell will be broken. The shepherd did what she told him, and next morning, just as the day broke, he saw his chest open and the flower come out. So he sprang up quickly and threw, threw a white cloth over it. Immediately the spell was broken and a lovely maiden stood before him, who confessed that she had been the flower and that it was she who had done all the work of his hut. She also told him her story, and he was so pleased with her that he asked her to marry him. But she answered, No, I want my sweetheart, Roland. Though he has forsaken me, I will always be true to him. She promised not to go away, however, but to go on with the housekeeping for the present. As in, for, the, for now, not as a gift. Now the time came for Roland's marriage to be celebrated. 
According to old custom, a proclamation was made that every maiden in the land should present herself to sing at the marriage in honor of the bridal pair. When the faithful maiden heard this, she grew very sad, so sad that she thought her heart would break. She had no wish to go to the wedding, but the others came and fetched her. How'd they find her? How odd. But each time as her turn came to sing, she slipped behind the others till she was the only one left, and she could not help herself. As soon as she began to sing, her voice reached Roland's ears. He sprang up and cried, That is the true bride, and I will have no other. Eh, he just flips around from woman to woman. <laughs> Everything that he had forgotten came back, and his heart was filled with joy. So the faithful maiden was married to her sweetheart, Roland. All her grief and pain were over, and only happiness lay before her. Not a great story, 